Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today we will be undertaking the topic of safety valve overhaul for the boilers. Before I start the topic, we will have to assume the fact that the boiler has been decommissioned and the safety valve is safely ready to be removed from the place. Hence, proceeding further. The easing air of the safety valve has to be removed from its place and the safety valve foundation has to be slackened given that the boiler is already at atmospheric pressure and there is no build up of pressure inside the boiler and that has been witnessed. Once the valve is slackened from the foundation, the entire structure has to be brought into the workshop and let us discuss the areas that are of particular focus. As we can see that the steam directly acts on the lower end of the valve lid thereby giving it the initial lift and then goes on to the additional channels from where it gives the additional lift and the spindle along with the valve lid completely lifts up of the valve seat. Therefore, the direct impingement action on the lid may lead to, may lead to corrosive action on the surface. It can also lead to impingement defects such as cracks or other degeneration. Hence, the lid surface that is the lower and the side surface as well as the top surface has to be closely examined for any kind of defects that have occurred. Upon opening of the safety valve, you would often encounter the fact that this surface might be a little sluggish a little brownish in appearance and can have collection of mud or other rust formation. Hence that has to be cleared specifically and very nicely before we carry out the inspection. Next on we have to carry out a thorough inspection of the wall spindle. As in the straightness of the wall spindle has to be inspected. That can be done after completely disassembling and checking it with the help of a gauge or checking it on the lath as well. Once the straightness has been checked thoroughly, the wall spindle has to be checked for other defects surface such as surface cracks, interstitial cracks, small impingement action and other corrosive defects as well. The wall spindle has to be thoroughly cleaned and made sure that it is completely rust free and there is no debris in the way. Going ahead in the diagram, as you can see, the spring also has to be checked because it is ultimately the compressive action of the spring that sells that sends the safety valve in its place and majorly regulates the kind of uh, opening pressure that is being dictated with the help of the locking nut and the compression nut. So for testing the spring, we have to make sure that we have a spare spring as well so that we can compare the actual length of the spring that is the free length of the existing spring which is in use with the new safety wall spring. We have to make sure that there is no degeneration in the free length of the spring upon comparison. Also a general hand test in the form of a drop test is carried out where the spring is dropped onto a flat surface from a certain height and the bounce that is the rebuttal of the bounce that is being observed to make sure that the spring still has elasticity and has not been damaged due to inoperation or steam damage that has occurred. It is also to be made sure that any passages especially the smaller passages like the drain channel which are there on the body of the valve have to be under open condition at all points of time that is these passages should not be choked because as you can see the stream once it escapes and goes out to the upper piston side through the under underside passage then once the steam uh, gives the high lift for the high lift safety valve through the steam piston then after condensing this steam has to find a passage to drain back 
and go through the drain line and finally collect it to the drain side so if these holes are choked then that can create ineffective action of the safety wall piston spring and ultimately the safety wall itself also we have to make sure that there is no corrosive indentation on the body no salt deposition on the body there is no rust accumulation inside the body and between the other parts that can get trapped and possibly lead to a stuck action of the safety wall as well as as you can see the drain passages that are available so obviously there will be drain channels leading to the lower drain side these drain channels have to be clearly inspected and it has to be made sure that the channels are open and clear at all points of time so that any drained water can easily find its passage downstream and get drained it is also to be checked that there is no significant deterioration in the floating ring and there are no visible marks scratches or any other kind of indentations present on the surface upon setting the floating ring should completely retain its place and should not have any kind of deformation upon checking all these things within the workshop during the overhaul of the of the safety valve in front of the surveyor once we are putting the safety valve in place the easing gear also has to be inspected thoroughly while we are not discussing the setting back procedure of the safety valve in this particular video as we have planned it for another video altogether we have to focus our special attention to one of the parts within the setting that is the setting of the easing gear because it is often found that in ships that are relatively older in age the easing gear is often found in dilapidated condition one of the common defect that occurs in the easing gear is that there are kinks in the uh, cables that are often found or the valve head is often stuck that is the cap side where the easing gear operates is often stuck in its place or has gathered rust or salt deposits that can lead to ineffective operation of the easing gear if the easing gear has a long cable running then the wheels through which the easing gear cables pass have also to be checked for free movement so that at any point of time through a rim, uh, through any location where the easing gear is meant to be operated it can be operated effectively other general checks that are to be also to be carried out are to be carried out on the wall seat of the safety wall and there can be manual grinding or lapping that can be carried out on these wall seats however before carrying out any such action it has to be made sure that the diameter of the seat and the thickness of the surface are well within the prescribed limits of the manufacturer for that the safety valve assembly manu uh, manufacturer's manual has to be referred specifically only then the action of lapping has to be carried out i hope that this video is helpful for you to understand the basic maintenance that can be carried out on the safety valve during its overhaul during the annual survey of the boiler and as discussed earlier we would be focusing our attention on the setting of the safety valve and the procedure that follows before and after in another video altogether please make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel for further such content thank you